All right. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, here and at home. How's everybody doing today? Fine. How are you? Again, my name is Diallo, and we are here for morning stretch today, or afternoon stretch, or evening stretch, or middle of the night stretch. Um, some of you at home, it could be 2 o'clock in the morning, could be 2 o'clock in the afternoon, whenever you're doing this. So today for exercise, we're going to do something a little bit different, okay? Uh, we are going, not only are we going to do our regular exercises with just our body weight, but we're also going to be using weights themselves. Okay, so we have weights. These are water weights. Now, um, if you at home do not have water weights like this or little small one pound weights, what you can use is you can use water bottles. So those little 16 ounce water bottles with water in them, you can use those as well. Okay, and not only are we going to use those, but we are also going to use bands. Okay, so everybody at home, we're going to use bands just like this, or even towels will work. Okay, but the stretchy bands, um, we're going to use those. And again, they can look like this as well, with handles on them. Okay, and one more piece of equipment we're going to need is pelotas. Pelotas? Balls? Pelotas. We're going to use balls. Okay. Now these are bouncy balls here, little bouncy balls. Okay, we're going to use these for some leg exercises, some feet exercises. Okay, and if you don't have those, that's perfectly fine. You can either skip over those exercises, or you can do them modified um, with a towel. You can even do it with a towel, or even a smaller bolt. Okay, or basketball works just as well. All right. So right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hand out some of this equipment to our lovely folks here in the room with me. All right, so here we go, Trudy. Okay, and this one, you're going to make sure that you hold, I should get this one. Make sure you hold them on the end, okay? On the end. All right, Annie, we'll get this one for you. Hold on the Okay, end. let's see here, Beatrice, we'll get that one for you. Hey, Frank. Mm -hmm. And then Jose. That one's for, actually, I'll take this one. Okay. Well, say this one's a little bit better for you, Jose. There you go. I know you can make it shorter. <laughs> you can make it shorter by doing it like this. See? So you come like this, and these will be your handles right here. Hold on. These will be your handles right there. Thank you. Okay? Even better here, I'll take this. 
I'll take this. Oh, no, you're good. So yeah, so the handles for you will be just like that. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's, yeah, that's good. And then for some of you, we're going to grab a couple of these. So this is going to be for you or Frank first. You get you get out one Frank. All right. And the colors. That's the Frank. Keep one. Here's another one, Frank. Everybody at home, I hope you're ready to go. Oh yeah. Hold on, Frank. Let me see that real quick. I think one needs to take. Okay. Okay. Now I'm going to grab mine right here. And we also have the pelotas, which I'm going to put next to our lovely contestants. <laughs> we got lovely contestants. I'm just going to put this right here so that it'll stay for later. It'll stay there for later. Okay. Bear with me at home. Just get everything set up for our lovely contestants here. Okay, a couple more pelotas for our people. Would you like a pink one? I'm not going to get my way. Oh, you already have one. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Beatrice, you got a nice beautiful pink one. And my man, you've already got one. We don't have one over there. Yes, he does. Yes. Oh, yeah, I see. Oh, wait, I need one. Huh, I, I forget about myself. Yeah. Forgot about myself. <laughs> Diablo needs one. Can't forget about yourself, man. I know. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen. So, our first exercise, warm up. It's going to be very simple. What we're going to do, okay, is get our neck loose first. What we're going to do is rotate our neck. Just like that, rotate in a circle, just like that. All the way around, keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep going, keep going, keep going. All right, now stop, go the other direction. Good. And stop, perfect. All right, now we're gonna work on First, we're gonna put our head down, chin to chin to chest, all the way down. And what you can do for this exercise as well is you're gonna take both hands, you're gonna put them behind your head, and you're gonna push your head down a little bit more. Just like this. Good. Now we're gonna put our head all the way to the ceiling, straight up. Look up to the ceiling. And as we're looking up to the ceiling, we're going to turn our head to the right, just like this. Keep our head looking up, we're going to turn to the right. And then we're going to turn to the left. Then turn to the right. And there you go. Perfect. Awesome. Okay, now we're going to get our upper body stretched out a little bit. So first, we're going to interlace our fingers together. Okay. Just like that. We're gonna rotate our palms up to the ceiling and come straight up so you can feel that nice, beautiful stretch. Good. Perfect. Now from here, what we're gonna do, we're gonna keep it up and we're gonna bend over to our right so we feel the stretch in our side oblique. Good. And then come back to the middle. Now we're going to go to the left. Perfect. Y'all see my new shoes? Yes. Beautiful yeah. shoes. Yeah. Yep. I hope they're beautiful. And back to the middle. I got surprised because I wear a size 14. I wear a size 14, 15. A lot of times I don't have that size because they're too big. But I was at Dick's Sporting Goods and they just happened to have them. The, only fun, the funny part was, because I'm really cheap when it comes to buying stuff and buying shoes. So I thought these were $59. So I tried them on, I tried a couple of, who's it, $59? I'm happy, like, I'm ready to go, okay? I get the checkout, he rings it up, $130. <laughs> I'm like, oh, for two. Oh, for oh two. well. For two, I was $130. No, for one. What? Yeah, exactly. So I was just like, you know what? Oh, well, I, buy, I just bought them. I was already up there, I wasn't going back. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah, I just bought it. <laughs> They're comfortable. They are, but it was $130. I was like, well, that's double oh, what I wanted to pay for. For what? Yeah, for a pair. Oh, my yeah. goodness. So you had 260 there. Yeah. No, so I I only got one. No, not for one, for one pair. So for, oh, for each one, one together. Okay. Yeah, they're not charging one shoe. Right. <laughs> I got you. Oh. That'd be a rip off place if they're charging one shoe each. Yeah. Yeah. But the way you were saying it, it sounded like. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to come back here. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to get to our butts to the edge of our seat. And we're going to spread our knees out as far as they go. So again, spread those knees as far as they go. There you go, Annie. Spread the knees. So again, Annie? Yeah. yeah, spread those knees as far as they go. There you go, perfect. Now get your butt to the edge of the seat. There, there you go, right there. Good, perfect. And now from here, what we're going to do is we're going to stretch down and try to test the ground with your fingertips. And you're going to feel the stretch. But you're going to feel the stretch in your groin. You're going to feel the stretch in your groin. And what you can do to make it even better stretch is as you're, when you're down here, you got you have your elbows. You're going to push your elbows against your knees, the inside of your knees, and you're going to get an even better stretch. Yeah. All right, back up. Good. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put both legs forward. Okay. We're going to come down and we're going to touch our toes. Feet straight out. There you go. Feet straight out. Toes up, perfect. And back up, excellent. All right, so now we're gonna start our exercise. So everybody, if you at home, if you have your bands, you can use your bands for this, or if you have weights, you can use your weights also, okay? So if we're using the weights, what we're going to do, well, first of all, we'll start with the bands, because that'll make it easier. So if you at home, if you have bands, what you're going to do is make sure you get to the edge of your seat so you have a little bit more room and you're going to take your band and you're gonna stick it under one under one foot, okay? Yes. Yep, you're gonna stick it under one foot, exactly. Yeah, there is, yep, so put it under one of your feet. And put that foot on the ground. Everybody got that? Okay, good. Now from here, what we're gonna do is we're going to do curls, bicep curls. So you're gonna come here, you come up, and we're gonna curl it up and then down, up, and then down, good, up, and then down, just like that. And if you, and if you, have, if you have weights, all we're gonna do with the weights is just go up and down just like that, okay? So, so with the bands, keep going with the bands. Up, there you go, down, that's one. Up, down, that's two. Up, down, that's three. Up, down, that's four. Up, down, that's five. Up. Down, that's six, good, up, down, that's seven, up, down, that's eight, up, down, that's nine, up, down, that's 10, good. Beatrice, get down, keep it, keep it under there, Beatrice. There you go, keep it under there. There you go, so we're gonna stay tall, and again, we're gonna come up, and we're gonna try to keep the foot on the ground. So push that foot hard on the ground, we're gonna go up, just like that, okay? Good, up. So we're gonna try to curl our arms up, just like that, okay? Good. Perfect. Okay. We're going to do another set of that. Everybody got that? Okay. If you got your bands, you're going to put one foot underneath one foot and weights. We got weights. So, everybody ready? And curl up and down. That's one. Up. Down. That's two. Up. Down. That's three. Up. Down. That's four. Up. Down, that's five, up, down, that's six, up, down, that's seven, up, down, that's eight, up, down, that's nine, and up, and down, that's ten. How does that feel? That's good, huh? It's good, huh? It's good though. Yeah. So now, we're going to work on our deep belly breathing, okay? So again, what we're going to do is we're going to breathe in through our nose, out through the mouth. And as we breathe, exhale out, we're gonna relax our body, okay? Again, breathe in through the nose. Exhale through the mouth, relax. In through the nose. Out through the mouth. One more, in through the nose. 
out to the mouth. Good, excellent. Okay, that breathing really helps because it helps uh, regulate your blood flow and it helps regulate your blood pressure as well. So if you have, if you have a heart, high heart rate, when you start breathing like that, it'll slow your heart rate down and, and get more oxygen to your blood. You have more oxygen in your blood, you're able to work out longer and with more strength. Okay? All right, so everybody, everybody back to your bands or your, um, or your weights. For this one, we actually just want to have weights with this one, okay? All right, so I'm gonna hand out some more weights. You're gonna get one. You're gonna get one weight. There you go. Frank, you got one. You have one. Let me take one from you, Frank. I call it the There you go. Good. So for this one, we're just gonna use one weight, okay? And for you, we're gonna use a ball for you, okay? We're just gonna use one weight. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with our left arm. We're gonna put our left arm in front of us, like so, and we're gonna lift it up and then down. So we're not gonna lift it up all the way, we're gonna lift it up parallel, okay? And down, okay? So up and down, that's three. Up and down, that's four. Up and down, that's five. Up, halfway up, down, that's six. Up, down, that's seven. Up. Down, that's eight. Up, down, that's nine. Up, down, that's ten. Again, Frank, we're only going to go halfway up, okay? Now we're just halfway. We're doing a great job. Great job at home. Now we're going to switch arms. So go to our other arm now, okay? Make sure it's down. And again, the, for this exercise, our palms are always going to be down to the ground, okay? So again, we're going to lift it up halfway and down. That's one. Up, down, that's two. Up. Down, that's three. Up. Good. Down, that's four. Up. Down, that's five. Up. Down, that's six. Up. Down, that's seven. Up. Down, that's eight. Up. Down, that's nine. Up. And down, that's ten. Ooh, excellent job. Great job. Now, in between that set, we're gonna we're just, we're gonna uh, supplement it with push-ups. Okay, so what, again, we only need one arm. So we're going to start with our left arm. We're going to get our left arm up just like so. Okay, so with our elbow bent, and we're going to push it up and down. That's one. Up, down, that's two. Up, down, that's three. Up, down, that's four. Up, down, that's five. Up, good job, Beatrice. Down, that's six. Up, is that a little bit too heavy? Down, that's seven. Up, push it all the way up then. Down, that push it all the way up, Beatrice. Up, yeah. down, that's nine. One more up, and down, that's 10. Push it all the way up there. Is it too heavy? No, okay. Okay. Again, if it's too heavy, you can move to something lighter. Like we have, we have uh, right here, he's doing weights. I mean, you're doing with the ball, which your ball weighs about half a pound, so we're okay with that. Now we're going to switch arms. Okay, so go to your other arm you were just doing. Lift it up. Okay, we're going to lift it up. Push it up, down, that's one. Up, down, that's two. Up, down, that's three. Up, down, that's four. Up, down, that's five. Up, down, that's six. Good, Beatrice. Up, down, that's seven. I see that smile. Up, down, that's eight. Up, down, that's nine. One more. Up, and down, that's ten. Perfect. Oh, I know you can feel that. That's a good one. That's the best exercise I've done in a while, huh? Now we're going to work on our deep breathing again. So everybody start. Again, make sure that our back is straight and our back is tall. Okay, breathe in through the nose. Out through the mouth. In through the nose. Out through the mouth. In through the nose. Out through the mouth. Good. Okay, now we're gonna start that, we're gonna start that set all the way over again. Okay, so we're gonna do start with our left hand. Left hand's gonna come down with that weight. And it will remind you again, for this particular exercise, we're only gonna lift it up halfway, up to there. Okay, and then down. Making sure that our palms are always facing the ground, always facing down, okay? So flip over your, flip your, there you go, flip over, yeah, perfect. Everybody ready? 
So now make sure that our back is tall and straight. Three, make sure our back is tall and straight. And we're gonna go up and down, that's one. Up, down, two, up, and down, that's three. Up, and down, that's four. Up, and down, that's five. Up, and down, that's six. Up, and down, that's seven. Up, and down, that's eight. Up, and down, that's nine or more. Up, and down, that's 10. Good, switch arms. It's a good workout today, huh, ladies and gentlemen. All right, you ready? Getting back tall. We're doing the same thing with the other arm. So again, up and down, that's one. Up and down, that's two. Up and down, that's three. Up, we have to go right here. This high, up, this high, there you go. Down, that's five. Up, down, that's six. Up, down, that's seven. Up, down, that's eight. Up, down, that's nine or more up. Down, that's 10, great job. Now we're gonna roll into push-ups, okay? So we're gonna switch arms again, go back to the other arm. Okay, we're gonna get our arm up just like this, and we're gonna push it up. Down, that's one, up. Down, that's two, up. Down, that's three, up. Down, that's four, up. Down, that's five, up. Down, that's six, up. Down, that's seven, up. Down, that's eight, up. Down, that's nine or more, up. And down, that's 10. Good, switch arms. Woo! Nice. Feeling it today. Hey, you show me that. You guys are gonna be Mr. Mr. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Olympia pretty soon. <laughs> Could be like Arnold Schwarzenegger in the heyday, just jacked. All right, so switch your arms. Arms up, one arm up, and up. Down, that's one, up. Down, that's two, up. Down, that's three, up. Down, that's four, up. Down, that's five, good job, Jose. Up, down, that's six, up. Great job, Beatrice. Down, that's seven, up. Down, that's eight, up. Down, that's nine more, up. And down, that's 10. Woo, great job, Jose. Great job, Trudy. Great job, Annie. Great job, Beatrice. Great job, Frank. And great job. We're not done yet, though. And great job at home. Okay, we're going to roll into our next exercise. So our next exercise, if you have a ball, we're going to make sure that we have our ball. Okay? And we're gonna, what we're going to do is we're going to sit back in our chairs a little bit. Okay? And we're going to put our ball between our feet. Okay, now this is going to be a little bit difficult, but it's good. Okay. So what we're going to do is put the ball in between our feet. We're going to lift it up. Okay. And what we're, my voice is cracked. I hit puberty. And what we're going to do is we're going to roll the ball just like this. Okay, good. We're going to roll it between our heels and our toes, and then back the other way, and roll it. There you go. This one's difficult. Okay. And then we're going to roll it. Good, and roll it back the other way. Excellent. One more, roll it the other way. Good, and down. That one's difficult, isn't it? Okay, but that, again, that works on our strength, not only our strength, but it also works on our mental dexterity, because in order to do that, we really have to concentrate to be able to move the ball between our feet in, in this particular angle, okay? Great job. So again, no, I, nobody's doing it right now, but I'm gonna show you how to do this again, okay? okay. So nobody has to do it, I'm just gonna show you. Again, that ball is gonna go in between your feet, and we're gonna try to roll the ball inside like this, there you go. So that when it's finally said and done, you're gonna have part of the ball on your heel and the other part of the ball on the top of your foot. And then we're gonna roll it and switch it up just like that. Everybody got that? Okay, so we're gonna go two rolls each side. So it's a total of four. All right. So again, have that ball up. And we're gonna roll it and hold it. There you go. And back, that's one. Go the other side and hold it. That's two. Good. Roll the other side. And down, that's three. Roll the other side. And down, that's four. Woo! 
You should be able to feel that in your thighs. Yeah, when you're rolling like that, you're going to feel that in your thighs. Excellent job. All right, we're going to do one more set of that, okay? And in between that set, right now we're going to work on our deep breathing again. So make sure that we're staying tall in our chairs with our chest nice and out. Oh, okay, guys. Tarzan, it's dark. There you go. All right, ready? I'm going to breathe in through our nose. Out through the mouth. In through the nose. Out through the mouth. One more, in through the nose, out through the mouth. Excellent. Ooh, I got this right there. All right, last set of ball rolly foot things. <laughs> uh, so again, here I'm going to show you again how that's going to go, how, how we're going to do this. So again, the ball's between your feet. We're going to put our feet up, and we're literally going to roll the ball on our feet. So one part of the ball is on the heel, one part's on top of your foot, OK? Everybody got that? All right, ready, up. We're gonna roll it, and then back to the middle, that's one. Roll it again, the other side. Back to the middle, that's two. Roll it, and three. You got a ball with you. Frank, the ball's right there. Yeah, there you go. And roll it, that's no, for you. Oh, yeah, two. And roll it, and down. That's four, good. That was for you, Frank. Yeah, see everybody's using the ball. There you go. Yeah, we're supposed to use the ball. But you're getting an extra exercise using the weight doing it. Woo! That takes some strength, Frank. Frank the strength muscle man. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see where time is. Great job on that exercise. Okay, just about done here. Good job with the legs. Now we're going to work on our cool down exercise a little bit. We're going to work on our boxing. Okay? So everybody, get your dukes up. It's going to be like Mike Tyson, Muhammad Ali. No mops, no mops, no mops. Okay? So again, we're going to go on my pace. Everybody ready? We're going to punch. 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 My pace. Punch. 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 Punch, 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 punch. Punch, 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 keep going, punch, 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 Knock those people out. They knocked out. You got people <laughs> lay out across the ground. Woo, <laughs> Mama knocked them out. Ooh, Judy goodness. knocked them out. Beaches knocked them out. Annie knocked them out. Frank okay. knocked them out. Jose knocked them out. Annie knocked them out. I missed. You, you knocked them out. I missed. No. no I you missed. Knocked <laughs> <laughs> you weren't teaching us, so yes. you knocked them out. Now, in between that, we're going to work on our deep breathing again. Okay. So, again, stand up tall in your, or sit up tall in your chairs. Gonna breathe in through our nose, out through the mouth, in through the nose, out through the mouth. Relax. One more into the nose, out through the mouth. Perfect. All right. Late. Did I hit record? <laughs> Hold on. Let me make sure I hit record. Yes, I did. All right. <laughs> I just thought about that. I tight. Oh, All right. Everybody at home. So now we're getting, we're doing our boxing exercises. The first one was just punch, punch, punch. Now we're going to add in one more element with the punch. Anybody know what that is? Uppercut is correct. So I'll show you how this goes. We're going to go punch, punch, uppercut. Punch, punch, uppercut. Going on my pace. 
punch, punch, uppercut. 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 Get my pace. Punch, punch, uppercut. Punch, punch, uppercut. Excellent job. Punch, punch, uppercut. Punch, punch, uppercut. Good. Punch, punch, uppercut. Punch, punch, uppercut. Fantastic. Punch, punch, uppercut. Benissimo. Punch, punch, uppercut. She, she. Punch, punch, uppercut. Awesome. Punch, punch, uppercut. Punch, punch, uppercut. Punch, punch, uppercut. Punch, punch, uppercut. My pace. Punch, punch, uppercut. 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 Punch, punch, they lay out on the floor now. <laughs> All right, so we're going to add one more element to that, which we have not done in a while. So it's going to be a little bit difficult, but it's going to be so much fun. So how is this, how is this going to go? I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you how it's going to go. So again, we got our dukes up, and we're just going to go punch, punch, uppercut, elbow. Oh, throwing an elbow in there. So again. We're gonna go punch, punch, uppercut, elbow. 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 Punch, punch. Into your seats. Uh -oh. Make sure you wiggle them legs. Get them turkey. Let me see. Wiggle your legs. Just like this. Get them turkey legs. Come on. Wiggle them. Wiggle them. Get them turkey legs. Get them turkey legs. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Yeah. All right. <laughs> now we're going to get our knees apart, just like so. Okay. So again, knees apart as far as they go. We're going to come down and reach, stretch down, and try and touch your, the floor with your fingertips. Perfect. And as we're doing this, we can take our elbows that we have and push them against the inside of our knees and push. So we get the extra stretch in our groin and our thighs. And back up. Perfect. Okay, now what we're going to do is put just our left leg out on the ground out. Okay with the heel on the ground, and we're gonna reach down and stretch and touch those toes. Perfect, touch those toes. Yes, ma'am. And then back up, we're gonna to switch to our right leg, with the right leg out with our heel on the ground, toes up, reach down and try and touch your toes. Good. 
and back up. Good. Now we're going to come to our upper body stretch. This one, we're going to get our fingers together, interlaced. Okay. Roll our palms up to the sky and reach up. Reach up. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> now from here, we're going to reach over and roll to our right side. Get the stretch of our side obliques. All right. Yes, ma'am. Good. Now we're going to roll over to the other side. Perfect. Back to the middle. And down. Ooh. How's that feel? Great. <laughs> Good. So again, thank you everybody at home, here and abroad. Very much. Thank you for joining me for our daily stretch. Well, thank Again, you. my name is Diallo. Diallo. The whole name is Diallo Eric Fon. Diallo Eric Fon. It's West African for Cameroon. It means bold one. Oh. Yes. All right. Again, thank you for joining me. My name is Diallo, and I will see you next time. All right. Okay. Thank, you. thank you. We're not done yet. <laughs> We're done here. I look like a modern day commando. <laughs> I'm a ninja wow. commando. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good morning, afternoon, evening, night, whatever time zone it is where you are. Thank you for joining me today. Again, everybody here and abroad, my name is Diallo. And for today's activity, we're going to do current events. And then we're going to end with some movies and DVDs with D. All right. So first we're going to do current events for today being Wednesday, July 8th, 2020. And we are reading current events from the East Bay Times. All right. Man. So here's, here's the first one we're going to read. Okay. The title of this article from today's paper, which again, today's July 8th, 2020, it's a Wednesday. It's ex UC Irvine Chancellor to lead UC system. So do you know what the UC system is? No. The UC system is, UC stands for University of California. The UC system is all the colleges in the University of California system. So there's UC Irvine, UCLA, UC Santa Barbara, um, UC Baker Irvine, I believe. Um, there's a couple of them, and then of course there's UC Berkeley, which is literally right across the street. Okay. All right. So again, the ex UC Irvine Chancellor to lead UC system. Regents' unanimous choice will become the first black president. So he's the first black president of the UC system. Let's read who he is and what he's doing. Michael V. Drake, a former UC Irvine chancellor, was unanimously selected Tuesday to become the president of the 10 campus University of California system, becoming the institution's first black leader. Regents emphasized Drake's experience, innovative, uh, initi innovation, collaborative, approach and likability as well as a divert and well as well as the diversity he brings to the post. Drake, who turned 70 on Thursday, retired last month after six years as president of the Ohio State University. He will replace retiring UC president Janet Napolitano, who ends her seven year tenure on August 1st. We had we had, many, we had many wonderful choices, but Michael Drake really stood out, Regent Sherry Lansing said. He's, he's had a illustrious career, and this will be the culmination of that career, she said. Regents noted that his experience leading UC Irvine from 2005 to 2014 and previous UC post as Vice President for Health Affairs gave him familiarity with the system and that his background made him particular, particularly well poised to guide the university system during a period 
of national and a period of national and global turmoil. We wanted a new president who could lead UC through these unprecedented times, said John Perez, chairman of the Board of Regents. In return, Drake, in return, Drake, an administrator and physician, acknowledged the coronavirus pandemic, climate change, and wounds of social injustice as issues that could shape his new job. UC is one of the world's is one of the world's institutions best positioned to address these issues, Drake told Regents during the online meeting. I am happy to be rejoining my UC family, and I'm excited and ready to go, he said. Napolitano praised Drake as a seasoned and committed leader, ready to hit the ground running. This is an important moment, one more step to make sure the university reflects the diversity of the state, she said. In taking the reins, Drake will lead a 101-year-old institution with 280,000 students and more than 227,000 faculty and staff. That's big. UC's faculty are the, are the drivers behind innovations in biotechnology, computer science, art, and architecture, according to the university's system website. Drake was born in New York City to a physician and a social worker. The family eventually settled in Sacramento. He graduated, from, he graduated from Stanford University and received his medical degree in ophthalmology from UC San Francisco. Ophthalmology, he's an ophthalmologist, correct. Before, take, before taking over as chancellor of UC Irvine, he spent five years as vice president for health, for health affairs for the UC system. Upon leaving UC Irvine in 2014, he was awarded the University of California Presidential Medal in recognition of his work in the UC system. Under Michael's guidance, UCI, UC Irvine grew from a regional university to one of, the, to one of global, global prominence, all while remaining true to our mission of serving the people of California. Current, that was current UC Irvine Chancellor Howard Gilman wrote Tuesday on Twitter. Drake is married to an attorney, Brenda Drake, has two grown sons and four grandchildren. He's a bicyclist and a guitarist whose first job was at Tower Records. He is on the board of directors of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. How about that? Not only is he the chancellor of the UC system, he's also on the, on the board of directors for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. <laughs> I wouldn't have put those two together. <laughs> Man, so that was a good. That was a good article, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. They didn't have UC San Diego. It, that's part of the system. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, that's where I was going. All right. So here's a here's another article. This is from the health section. It says doctors say treatment may have rid man of HIV. Does everybody know what HIV is? AIDS. AIDS, correct, it's AIDS, right? And it came from monkeys. Really? Yes, yeah, so it eventually came from monkeys in Africa. And because a lot of places in Africa, like for instance, where my dad lives in Cameroon, what my family is, when you live out in the jungle in areas, you know, where there's no grocery stores, you eat what they call bush meat. Bush so that's meat. bush meat. So that's any kind of meat that's just out there in the jungle. Like let's say for, like say here in Berkeley, if I were to eat bush meat, it would be like a cat. Ooh. Like I would hunt somebody's cat and eat that. That's bush meat. Oh, or a turkey or a pigeon or something like that. That's bush meat. Okay. And AIDS is one of the, the biggest killers in the world besides cancer and stuff like that. And there's no cure for AIDS. Like there's no cure for cancer. There's treatments for AIDS. So back in the 70s, if you were to get AIDS, it was a death sentence. Meaning you would die with it usually within a year. Nowadays, if people get AIDS, they'll live out their life like they never had it because the medication and the treatment's gotten so what well, does gotten way better now that doesn't mean go out there and have sex and get AIDS <laughs> always use protection even for even for you folks always use protection yeah. yes definitely me one because I don't want any babies <laughs> I don't need any baby I can barely take care of myself let alone a kid <laughs> all right so again doctors say treatment may have rid man of HIV this is from the Associated Press. 
A Brazilian man infected with the AIDS virus has shown no sign of it for more than a year since he stopped HIV medication medicines after an intense experimental drug therapy aimed at purging hidden, hidden dormant virus from his body. And do doctors report Tuesday. The case needs independent verification and it's, it's way too soon to speculate about a possible cure, scientists caution. These are exciting findings, but they are very preliminary, said Dr. Monica Gandhi, an AIDS specialist at UC San Francisco. This has happened, this has happened to one person and one person only, and it didn't succeed in four others given the same treatment, she said. Another UC San Francisco specialist, Dr. Stephen Deke, said, this is not a cure, just an interesting case that merits more study. The case was described at an AIDS conference where researchers also disclosed an important prevention advance. A shot of an experimental medicine every two months worked better than daily Truvada pills to help keep uninfected gay men from catching HIV from an infected sex partner. Hundreds of thousands of people take these pre-exposure prevention pills now and, and the shot could give a new option, almost like a temporary vaccine. If the Brazil's if the Brazil man's case is confirmed, it would be the first time HIV has been eliminated in an adult without a bone marrow or stem cell transplant. Independent experts want to see whether his remission lasts for the last and for the intense drug combination that he received to undergo more testing. I'm very moved because it's something that millions of people want, said the 35 year old man who spoke to the Associated Press on a condition that is name would not be published. It's a gift of life, a second chance to live, he said. Interesting. Well, good for him. Very interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so here's some news from around the world. This one's kind of sad, but death, it's from Japan. Death toll from flooding reaches 55. So there's, there's a, it, they're having really bad uh, rainstorms in Japan right now. They're basically uh, hurricanes, okay? And at one point on Monday in a certain part of Japan, they had 10 inches of rain in one hour. That's crazy. 10 inches of rain in one hour? I mean, that would flood anywhere. Man. So let's read this from the Associated Press in Tokyo. Soldiers use boats to rescue residents as floodwaters flowed down streets in southern Japan, Japanese towns hit by a heavy rain that was expanding across the region on Tuesday. At least 55 people have died and a dozen more remain missing. Pounding rain since late Friday in the southern region of uh, Kyushu has triggered widespread flooding. More rain was predicted in Kyushu and the western half of Japan's main island of Honshu as the rain front moved east. In Fu Fukuoka, on the north northern part of Kyoshu, soldiers waded through knee-high water pulling a boat carrying a mother, her two-month-old baby, and two other residents. Good job, one of the soldiers said as he held the baby up in his chest while the mother got off the boat. Ashi video, uh, Asahi video showed Several children wearing orange life vests over their wet t-shirts arrived on another boat. An older woman told public broadcaster NHK that she started walking down the street to evacuate, but flood floodwaters rose quickly to her neck. Wow. Another woman said, I was almost washed away and had to grab an electrical pole. The Fire and Disaster Man Management Agency said 49 victims were from River, from the Riverside Towns and Komodo Prefecture. Another victim was a woman in her 80s found inside her flooded home in another prefecture. About 3 million residents were advised to evacuate across Kyushu, Japan's third largest island. And tens of thousands of army troops, police, and other rescue workers mobilized from around the country worked their way through mud and debris in the hardest hit riverside towns along the Kuma River. Jeez. That's crazy, huh? No, we are very lucky. Ooh. Man, well, they have, they have flooding in the United States, too. I remember when I was in college, oh, yeah. 
my freshman year in college, they had some of the worst rainstorms in the Midwest. And my, we were driving through uh, Missouri, and they had sports fields besides the freeway. There was so much flooding. They had a, a snack shack. The water was over the snack shack. All you could see was the little steeple of the snack shack. And they had the lights to the field. The water was halfway up the light poles. There was like 10, 12 feet of water just sitting there. It's crazy. Just living in the laws all my life. We have come through so many hurricanes. Yes, indeed. Were you there for Hurricane Katrina? Oh, yes. Oh, man, that's scary. I've been through tornadoes before, but hurricanes, even though you know it's coming. Yeah, but you got to go to some high, you know, like we used to go to high school. Yeah. They had three floors. That was Okay, so here's one um, about education. It says, Trump says he'll pressure states to reopen schools. This is from the Associated Press. President Donald Trump on Tuesday launched, launched an all-out effort to reopen schools this fall, arguing that some are keeping schools closed, not because of the coronavirus pandemic, but for political reasons against the will of the families. Mm. We want to reopen the schools. Everybody wants to. Everybody wants it. The moms want it. The dads want it. The kids want it. It's time to do it, Trump said at the White House event. We're very much going to put pressure on governors and everybody else to open the schools, he said. Trump did not immediately explain how he would pressure governors, but he repeated an earlier claim that Democrats want to keep schools closed for political reasons and not for health reasons. He made the same claim Monday on Twitter, saying they think it will help them in November. Wrong. The people get it. At a White House roundtable hosted by Trump, speaker after speaker addressed the need to get students back into the classroom, both for academic and mental health reasons. They minimized the risk of the spread of COVID-19 among children, but acknowledged that it was important to protect the vulnerable. In making, in making its case, the Trump administration has argued that keeping students at home carries greater risk than than any tie to the coronavirus. Health officials say students need to be in school this in schools this fall to continue their educational development and to access meal programs and services for mental and behavioral health. Children's mental health and social development must be as much of a priority as physical health, First Lady Melania Trump said at the round table. The same is true for parents. Many will be forced to make stressful choices between caring for their children and going back to work, she said. Trump made his remark hours after Education Secretary Betsy DeVos assailed plans by some local districts to offer in-person instruction only a few days a week and said schools must, fully, must be fully operational. Anything less, he, she said, would fail students and the taxpayers. De DeVos made the comment during a call with governors. Audio of the call was obtained by the Associated Press. Ultimately, it's not a matter of, a, ultimately, it's not a matter of if schools need to open, it's a matter of how. Schools must reopen, they must be fully operational. And how that happens is best left to the education, best left to education and community leaders, DeVos told the governors. So they want to open up schools during the pandemic, interesting. Hmm. Very interesting. I know. Very interesting. Just lost track of time here. Let's see what we got. All right. A couple more stories from current events. Let's see. Just uh, here we go. You guys, you know who Justin Timberlake is? He's a singer. Yeah. So. He's a singer and actor. So Justin Timberlake, this one's for this celebrity, celebrity news, okay? Justin Timberlake joins calls to remove Confederate statues. Um, Justin Timberlake, a native of Tennessee, has called for the removal of Confederate monuments throughout the country. In an Instagram post on Monday, he wrote, America was built by men who believed in and benefited from racism. Those men who proudly owned and abused black people are still celebrated all over the country. They are roughly 
1,848 Confederate statues of Confederate statues in the United in the United States. He continued. More than half are in the South, and it's not acceptable. No one should be protecting the legacies of Confederate leaders and slave owners. If we plan to remove, if we plan to move forward, these monuments must come down now. The issue is only one of many currently polarizing the country, and although controversy, controversy has surrounded the Confederate monument uh, matter since its reemergence in the wake of 2017 domestic terrorist attack on Charlottesville. In Charlottesville, Virginia, the pendulum of public opinion seems to have swung substantially toward removing them. According to a recent Quinnipiac poll, 52% 52, 52 of people polled are in favor of removing them from public spaces, with 44% opposed. Were the other like 8% just born alive or what? Okay, other portions of Timberlake's post appear below. A lot of you know I'm from Tennessee, a state that happens to be the home of many, many Confederate monuments. I've been listening closely to the ongoing debates about what to do with these statues, and I really want to take a minute to talk about this. Again, there are roughly 1,848 Confederate statues in the U.S., more than half are in the, in, in the South, and this is not acceptable. No one should be protecting legacies of Confederate leaders and the slave owners. If we plan on moving forward, these monuments must come down. But let's remember, removing these statues does not erase our country's vile history of oppression. Removing them is a symbol of respect for Black people in America, and it's a step toward progress and actual equality for all. Okay, how about News of the Weird? Yes, a game of chicken. The Sun reported June 29th that two Rainier pilots are in the chicken are in the chicken soup after they reported themselves getting silly with a rubber chicken in a Boeing 737-800 cockpit. Interesting. Hold on. In the video, thought to be recorded as passengers boarded the plane in Birmingham, England, the first officer and pilot trade off using the chicken to operate the airplane's throttle and make it squeak while mugging for the camera. A Rainier spokesman said, while the images are unprofessional, the actions in them pose no risk or safety and no risk and safety was never compromised, but there is an open inquiry. So they were flying the plane with a rubber chicken. <laughs> That's crazy. That was in England. Yeah. All right, so last one we're going to do. So today, again, is Wednesday, July 8th. We're going to do Today in History. So we're going to look back through history on this day and see what happened. So the first one is from 1776. So on this day in 1776, Colonel John Nixon gave the first public reading of the Declaration of Independence outside the United States House. In, out, outside the United States House in Philadelphia. And that house is now Independence Hall. Interesting. This day in 1972, the Nixon administration announced a deal to sell 700, 750 million in grain to the Soviet Union. Because this was a time where the Soviet Union, they were actually starving. Because Stalin had before had purged all, not only his, his military leaders, but he also purged and denigrated all the farmers in the country because he thought the government could farm better. So what do you think happened when he, when he purged and killed all the farmers and put them in the, in the camps? Do you think the government, because the government doesn't know how to farm. <laughs> exactly. And one of Stalin's right-hand men claimed that he could genetically modify grain to make it grow better. Guess what happened? It killed everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So millions it end up killing millions of so of Russians because they couldn't grow any food. Ugh. Good old communism at its best. Mm -hmm. This day in 2011, Atlantis Atlantis thundered into orbit on a cargo run that would close out three decades of U.S. space shuttle program. So 
Space Shuttle Atlantis. And the space shuttle, the big thing that they would shoot up in the shoot yeah. up in the space, yeah. and then it would come down and it would land like an airplane. That was the last flight of the U.S. space shuttle. They had hundreds of space shuttle flights, and unfortunately, they did have two accidents. One accident, if you remember, had, had a Sally Ride, who was a who was an who was a middle school teacher. Who won an who won a an award where she got to fly into space on the space shuttle as a civilian? It happened in, in 1986. Okay, so she got to go into space. So she trained for like a year to do it. And in Cape Canaveral, they were all ready to go. She was they were on the launch pad. Her parents were even there watching. The space shuttle <laughs> shot up. Everything was good. Everything was good. And then the space shuttle blew up. Ooh. And eighty-six space shuttle blew up. Her mm -hmm. parents saw it, and of course, everybody passed away. Mm -hmm. Like, man, that's scary. And then the other accident happened when the space shuttle was already in space, but it had to come back in to land. And when you come back in from space, you have to come at a certain angle into the atmosphere. And when you do that. It's really, really hot because you're going so fast. It'd be like going, it'd be like coming in at 100 miles an hour on sandpaper. And the vehicle you're in gets really, really hot. So on the space shuttle, they have special heat shields on the bottom of it that absorb the heat. And when this, when this space shuttle took off into space, mm -hmm. um, a piece of foam flew off and hit one of the heat shields and knocked it off. So that compromises the whole entire shuttle. So now when the shuttle came in to back into Earth's atmosphere, mm -hmm. because that, that uh, part of the space shuttle was damaged from the heat shield, the heat was able to get in. And as it was coming into the, into the atmosphere, it, it, it did the uh, space shuttle literally disintegrated. Yeah. And everybody died, passed away. Mm -hmm. It literally disintegrated. And the pieces were scattered over three states. They were mm -hmm. scattered over Texas, Arizona, and California. Mm -hmm. And people could see a sh fireball streak going across the sky. Like how that? that was in 2004 or five, you want to say? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's, that's crazy, huh? Yeah. That is absolutely crazy. All right, let's see what else we got. One more story. Here we go. Here's a story about, so I'm a very, very nice person. I love everybody. Yeah, I don't hate anybody. Hate is such a strong word. I always, if I don't like somebody, I, really, I, I always say I dislike somebody. Okay. There's one person in my life who I actually don't like very much. And it's a person who I played baseball with growing up. And now he plays in the NFL. Yes, I, do, I just did not like him very much. We got along fine. It was just, you know, we had our differences. Okay. So this is a story about him. Okay. It says, Jackson apologizes for anti-Semitic post. So you know what anti-Semitic means, right? No. Anti-Jewish. Like Hitler? Yeah. Hitler was anti-Semitic because he didn't like Jews. He thought Jews were horrible people, which is stupid. So, Eagles wide receiver Desan Jackson apologized Tuesday for a recent Instagram post in which he praised Louis Farrakhan and shared a text that included a fake Hitler quote. Jackson's attempt to explain and express remorse included a statement and a video in which he said he didn't intend any harm or hatred, and he disavowed any approval of Hitler. I really didn't understand what this passage was saying, Jackson said. Hitler has caused terrible pain to Jewish people, like the pain African Americans have suffered. We should be together fighting anti-Semitism and racism. On Sunday, Jackson highlighted several paragraphs from a text perpetuating, uh, purporting to quote Hitler saying that black people were the real children of Israel 
and falsely claiming that white Jewish people were secretly behind horrendous acts of violence against people of color, including lynching. So a complete, really, really complete lie. After receiving harsh criticism for sharing the passage, which has long been debunked as an internet meme attempting to claim Hitler was not a racist, Jackson posted a new message claiming that his post was misunderstood and that he has no hatred in his heart toward anyone, including Jewish community. Interesting. Yep. Man. Some people do. Look. All right. So, again, my name is Diallo. Thank you again for joining me for current events today, July 8th, 2020, Wednesday. And again, come again with current events with Diallo. Thank you for joining me. I'll take a Costco hot dog here. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, here and across the wonderful world and universe. So, if we're broadcasting out in space right now, and somewhere far, far away in the future, you're an alien who's come to Earth and visiting, welcome. My name is Diallo. And for today's activity, we are going to be doing movies and DVDs with D, which is me, as you can see. Okay. That's how it's going to be. All right. So the object of the purpose of this activity is I've got movies here, and I've got DVDs, and I've got me D. And we're going to read through some of the backs of these movies and go over them and have some fun. Everybody got that at home? All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spread these out a little bit. I'm going to spread these out, and we're going to see what kind of mischief we can get into. All right. So our first movie is going to be a DVD. This one is called, actually, let me move this up a little bit so you all can see it at home. Let's move this up so you all can see at home. No, you're fine. Yeah, let's move it a little bit. Stand up. So this way, there you go. Now you can see. Thank you. All right. So that ooh, I almost fell right there. <laughs> I almost fell. So everybody at home can see. Okay, this one, this new DVD is called Walk Out. Hey Frank, what's going on? We're almost done here. We're doing we're doing our our okay. It's hard. Oh yes. So again, this one's called Walk Out. Okay. It says all it takes is the courage to step out. Okay. Reading, <laughs> writing, and revolution. All right. So from the producers of the movie Selena and directed by award-winning actor Edward James Olmos comes a stirring true story of courage and justice. The year is 1968, the height of the national civil rights movement. Paul Cristamo, Paul Cristamo, is an idealistic honor student who refuses to play it safe in a school system that discriminates against Mexican Americans. Together with thousands of supporters, she coordinates a multi-school walkout of students to protest academic prejudice. Mentored by her charismatic teacher, Sal Castro, and with the help of her friend, Bobby, Paula learns that sometimes the price of progress is high, but it's ultimately worth came for. So yeah, how about that? Sometimes the, this, this movie kind of corresponds to what's going on today in the United States, right? We have a lot of especially young people that are protesting about racial injustice and especially in the, in the police force, right? So this is really strong. And it, it's, it's one of those movements where the price is very high. You could lose a lot of your livelihood. You could even lose your life from people that disagree with you, who want the status quo of injustice to stay in place. Why? So that they keep their power. But what they fail to realize is that if they go along with the justice and equality for all, they're actually gonna make more money. 
I never understood that. These people want separation, but like, oh, I don't like you because I want you to stay over there. But if you realize if you take that person's money and everybody else's money, you make more money. So what's the problem? Everybody's happy. So yes, that movie's called Walkout. It's got, it is directed by Edward James Olmos, who's a great actor. You know who he's just Jose, yes. Like he plays in the movie Stand By Me, where he's the teacher. How do I get through to these kids? <laughs> great movie. All right, so the next one is going to be a movie, Armageddon. So you all know what Armageddon means? Where, where's Armageddon from? It's from the Bible, right? Armageddon means the, 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 the final days. Yeah, it means like the, the, the death of the earth, Armageddon. So this movie... This movie is, is uh, directed by Michael Bay. Now, Michael Bay is a director. If you see any of his movies, he loves blowing stuff up. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Bay movies, there is a whole lot of explosions. It's like somebody says a line, like, I'm okay. Boom, explosion. How are you? Boom, explosion. <laughs> Those are Michael Bay films. <laughs> so again, this is Armageddon for love, for Honor and for Mankind, starring Bruce Willis, when he had hair. <laughs> yeah, when he had hair. <laughs> oh, he's bald now. Yeah. He looks good bald, though. All right, so let me, read, let me read this now. So the New York Times says, this movie is total, complete fun from beginning to end. It says from the blockbuster, from the blockbuster making team who produced who produced and directed The Rock comes the biggest movie of the year, Armageddon. Starring the explosive talents of Bruce Willis, Academy Award winner Ben Affleck, and Billy Bob Thornton, Liv Taylor, Steve Buscini, and Will Patton. Armageddon is a Armageddon is a meteor storm of action, action and adventure movie making that has you at the edge of your seat forgetting to breathe. When NASA's executive director, Don, Dan Truman, realizes the Earth has only 18 days before it's obliterated by a meteor, meteor this, the size of Texas, he has only one option. Land a ragtag team of roughneck oil drillers on the asteroid and drop a nuclear warhead into its core. Spectacular special effects, laugh out loud humor, Great characters, riveting storytelling, and heartfelt emotion make Armageddon an exhilarating thrill ride you'll want to experience like no one's tomorrow. So this is actually a really good movie. This is probably one of the better movies made. And again, it's a sign, one of the leading scientists in the United States for NASA realizes that there's a giant meteor you know what a meteor is, like an asteroid? It's coming to, it's going to hit Earth. And they have 18 days to try to stop it. That's, and so their only way of stopping it in 18 days, their only thought about stopping it is to send up a team of people. They happen to be oil drillers because they know how to drill into rock, land them on the asteroid, drill some holes, and throw a nuke in there. So then when the nuke blows up, the asteroid blows up. Although, there's only one problem. Well, if the asteroid, when, they, when they blow up the asteroid, does it disintegrate? No, it's gonna blow up into small pieces. So the Earth is still gonna get hit with the asteroid, there's gonna be in smaller pieces spread out. So it's supposed to lessen the damage instead of having a full on impact where everybody dies. So this is a great movie. And at the end of the day, they succeed, kind of. No, they don't. <laughs> you know who the president is, though? I believe the president is Morgan Freeman in this. Black president. Mm -hmm. All right, so our next DVD or movie is going to be Night to Remember. A tribute to the music and romance of years gone by. It does, huh? It sounds real nice. Okay. 
It's the most romantic film you'll ever see. How about that? Okay, so a night to remember. Here's here's some of the songs on this on from this movie. Baby, baby, baby. Anybody know that song? Or the song Cry, or I'm Yours, Kissing a Fire, or Tell Me Why Ain't Nothing But a Heartache. Tell me why ain't nothing uh -uh you say. I want it that way. And all you caregivers at home, I know you know what that is. <laughs> some of you who are my age, that was your middle school crush right there, or your high school crush. <laughs> All right, so we're going to read the back of this now. Again, it's called A Night to Remember. So, never before in a short film format has music, fashion, 1950s culture, and romance come together so perfectly. This hi-fi short film musical is brought to you in a refreshing new way. Ten songs recreated show the painstaking details to 1950s life. This dialogue-free, one-of-a-kind DVD brings to life an enriching emotional and romantic entertainment experience you will never forget for this night to remember. Interesting. All right, so our next film DVD is going to be Natalie Wood and West Side Story. Some of you know what West Side Story is, right? It's a story, it's like Romeo and Juliet type story. Oh, it's a modern version. So this brilliant film sets the ageless story of Romeo and Juliet against a backdrop of gang warfare in 1950s New York. Directed by Robert Wise and Jerome Robbins and scripted by Ernest Lehman, the film combines Leonard Bernstein's and Stephen Sondheim's unforgettable score, Maria. America, Somewhere, and Tonight. A love affair is fated from tra for tragedy amidst the vicious rivalry of two street gangs, the Jets and the Sharks. When Jets member Tony falls for Maria, the sister of the Sharks leader, it's more than these two warring gangs can handle. And as mounting tensions rise, a battle to the death ensues, and innocent blood is shed in the heartbreaking finale. So if anybody knows anything about Romeo and Juliet, what happens to Romeo? He dies. So you kind of know the ending of this. <laughs> All right, so our next, our next one is going to be good old John Wayne movie called Operation Pacific. Good old John Wayne. Good old John Wayne. What's that? Go for it. <laughs> World War II rages across the Pacific and Lieutenant Commander Duke E. Gifford is in the thick of it. He evacuates children from enemy held islands, oversees the research and development of torpedoes at Pearl Harbor, and prowls the depths in the submarine Thunderfish, hoping for a chance to aim his improved tin fish, which are torpedoes, at the holes of the enemy fleet. John Wayne brings his man of action persona to the role of Gifford in Operation Pacific. I'm no theory man, I'm a line officer. Gifford barks. He backs it up with a lot of bite and a series of feverish battles. Yet, he also, yet he's also a man of heart with a loving wife in the home port. in the home port. Retired Vice Admiral Charles Lockwood, World War II commander of all the US Pacific submarines, was, was the technical advisor for this rough and ready adventure, packing real you are there thrills. I gotta see this, I've never seen this. Interesting. Again, that's Operation Pacific, starring John Wayne himself, Pilgrim. All right, so the next Movie DVD is going to be one of my favorite movies of all time. 
love this movie. I remember the first time I saw it, I was 10 years old. What year was it made in? Hold on. Let me make sure. It was made in 94, so I was, yeah, I was 10 years old. It was the first time I saw this. Demolition Man with Sylvester Stallone and Wesley Snipes. Love this movie. Um, you seen it? Yeah, I love the movie. Hello, Annie. So again, the movie is Demolition Man with Sylvester Stallone and Wesley Snipes. Like I said, it's one of my favorite movies of all time. So let's read this. Sergeant John Spartan doesn't fight crime. He rips into it like a junkyard dog. He's the demolition man, and he's the future's only hope. Sylvester Stallone and Wesley Snipes go at it amid a dazzling cyber future in this fierce and funny action blast from producer Joseph, Joel Silver. The year is 2032. And an arch criminal, an arch criminal, Simon Phoenix, has emerged from a 35-year deep freeze and cryo prison to find a serum. Wait, just try that again. The year is 2032. An arch criminal, Simon Phoenix, has emerged from a 35-year deep freeze in cyber prison to find a serene, violence-free Southern California ready for the taking. Ill-equipped to deal with Phoenix's psychopath psychopathic 1990s style, city officials decide they need an old-fashioned cop to fight the old-fashioned crime. They need Spartan, currently serving time in cryo prison because of his last encounter with Phoenix. After they thaw him out, the excitement heats up. Spartan may be suddenly out of his element, but he's never out of the action. So again, in the 1990s, they freeze them both. So they put him in a prison and freeze them, and then, when, then, then they have to unfreeze them. And then the bad guy, the cop, goes out to the bad guy and shows the 2032 people how to fight crime like he did in the 1990s. In this movie, the future is nonviolent, and if you cuss, you get a ticket. So if you say the word ass, it goes beep, 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 and a ticket will come out. <laughs> you need to pay a fine for saying ass. <laughs> All right. That's not good. No, no, no. At least hope not. <laughs> All right. So the next movie will be another John Wayne movie, North to Alaska. John Wayne himself. Oh, no, no, no. He died many years. John Wayne and Stuart Granger portray rough and tumble prospectors in this lighthearted adventure set in a rowdy heyday of the Alaskan gold rush. When Sam McCord, played by John Wayne, and George Pratt, played by Granger, fi finally strike it rich, George asks Sam to go to Seattle and bring back his fiance. But Sam falls in love with the spirited girl himself, and eventually George accepts his loss as he looks for other girls and other brawls. Co-starring Ernie Kovacs and Fabian, directed by Henry Hathaway, and showcasing a different side of Wayne, North to Alaska boasts comedy as well as action. Oh, interesting. So, so it's, an, it's an action adventure and romantic comedy all mixed together. Good old John Wayne. All right, so we have eight more we're going to do. Eight more. Yeah, it'll be quick, and then it'll be lunchtime for everybody. You at home, it'll be dinner, lunch, breakfast, doesn't matter. It'll be whatever you want it to be, snack time. Our next movie is going to be Get Smart. It's called Get Smart. This is the newer Get Smart. Yeah, the one from the 60s, the TV show from the 60s, a little bit different. Same concept. So this movie, Get Start, Get Smart stars Steve Carell, Anne Hathaway, Alan Arkman, and of course, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, when he had hair. <laughs> okay, so again, get smart. 
Steve Carell is in control as Maxwell Smart, the novice agent, often out of his depth, but never out of options in this action comedy, pitting him against the, nucle the nuclear scheme of the evil spy group, Chaos. Anne Hathaway partners with Max as ever capable Agent 99. And director Peter Siegel guides his stars through the dangerous realm of molar radius, multifunction pocket knives. Oh, whoa, sorry. Uh, let's try that again. <laughs> and director Peter Siegel guides his stars through the dangerous realm of molar radios, multifunction pocket knives, exploding dental floss, and more. Get Smart works as an action film, and it's funny. Hmm. There you go. Get Smart. All right. Our next movie is going to be Sunset Boulevard. It's an older movie starring William Holden and Gloria Swanson. They're what? Well, I'm pretty sure they're both dead. Because <laughs> this movie was made in 1950. <clears throat> so they were old then. They were probably in their 30s then. So if they were still alive, they'd be, if they were in their third, if 1950, they were 30 years old in 1950, they would be nine, they'd be 100 years old right now. 100 years old today, I believe. 30, yeah, something like that. All right. Gloria Swanson as Norma Desmond, an aging silent film queen, and William Holden as the struggling writer who is held in thrall by her madness, created two of the screen's most memorable characters in Sunset Boulevard. Winner of three Academy Awards, director Billy Wilder's orchestration of the bizarre tale is a true cinematic classic. From the uh, unforgettable opening sequence through the inevitable unfolding of tragic destiny, the film is a definitive statement on the dark and desperate side of Hollywood. Heinrich von Straheim, as Desmond discovers an ex-husband and butler, and Nancy Olsen as the bright spot and unrelenting ominousness, are equally celebrated for their masterful performances. That still does not tell me anything about this movie. <laughs> Don't mean anything about it. It's about the dark sides of Hollywood, which another great movie that talks about that that came out two years ago or last year is called Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. All right. So the next movie is going to be. It's going to be called. It's starring Gregory Peck, which he's. So Gregory Peck is not. But he was a woman's man, a women, woman's man back in the day, right? He did all the ladies and the men. <laughs> so again, it's starring Gregory Peck. It's called 12 O'Clock High. He's not big, is he? No. 12 O'Clock High. He pushed away the whole time, right? Yeah. And this was made in 1949. So 1949, that was right after the war. So between 1940, not 48, really, and like 1960, there was a whole lot of war movies about World War II because <laughs> it was fresh in everybody's head. So again, this was, it's 12 o'clock high. This gritty World War II action drama starring Gregory Peck, Gene Jagger, Hugh Marlowe, Gary Mer Merrill, and Millard, Millard Mitchell is seen as one of the most realistic portrayals of the heroics and perils of war. Convinced an, Air Force convinced an Air Force commander is at the breaking point, Brigadier General Savage, played by Gregory Peck, takes over his struggling bomber group. Kind and understanding, he adopts a crushing discipline to, re to revitalize the demoralized troops. At first resentful and rebellious, the flyers gradually chains as Savage guides them to amazing feats. But the stress of command soon takes its toll and the wary general reaches his own breaking point. Authentic aerial battle film and numerous acclaimed performances made 12 o'clock high a credible, 
incredible, stirring tale of courage and sacrifice. Hmm. So that's a good, that makes it seem good. Huh. Yeah. I have to see that one day, one of these days. All right, so our next movie, DVD, it's a double feature, actually. It's a double feature DVD. The first one stars Clark Gable, which everybody knows who Clark Gable is, right? And William Boyd. It's called The Painted Desert. In this classic Western featuring Clark Gable, what was Clark Gable's most famous movie? <laughs> Gone with the Wind. Yeah. yeah, Gone with the Wind. So in this classic Western oh. featuring Clark Gable, and an interesting fact about Clark Gable is that he was firmly against segregation. So the movie Gone with the Wind, it was actually the first movie where a black female won an Academy Award. Yes. Uh, oh man, I just forgot her name. Let me, I'm gonna look it up for everybody. Cause I know the name, but I can't think of it. So she was the first black female to win an Academy Award. And when the Academy Awards were presented in LA, she was not allowed to be in the Kodak theater with everybody else in the hotel. She was not allowed to, because she was black. And Clark Gable, with all of his might, tried to make it so she could accept her Academy Award in the hotel with everybody else. So she could be equal, but they would not do it. So she had to accept her award in the colored hotel and give her speech on the, basically on the radio. So hold on. African American and... Sorry, she did not the Academy Award, she won an Oscar. Her name was Hattie McDaniel. Yes. So again, Hattie McDaniel becomes the first African-American actress to win an Oscar. On February 29th, 1940, Gone with the Wind is honored for eight Oscars by the American Academy of Motion Pictures and Arts. And one of those Oscars was for Hattie McDaniel. Her, yep. Did you? She died in 1952. She was born in 1893 and died. She only lived 50 years, 50 years old. Wow, that's really young. Well, actually, back then, that was about normal. I know. Oh, she was married three times. Whoa, one, two, three, four. She's married five times. Woo! Five marriages. Oh, oh. <laughs> That's a lot of marriages, huh? It is. <laughs> Man. So let's, let's see the first marriage here. First marriage was in 1911 through 1915. She was married to Howard Hickman. Her second marriage was from 1922 to 1925. She was married to George Langford. Her third wedding was from 1922 to 1938, which was her longest. And it was, his name was Nim Lankford. Her fourth marriage was to James Lloyd Crawford from 1941 to 1945. And Crawford was, he was like a, he was a producer of some sort. Her final marriage was to Larry Williams from 1949 to 1950. And that she was married to him in Yuma, Arizona. Which is right next to the Mexican border. Yeah, she's black. She's, yeah, she, yeah. she won the Academy Awards. Yeah, she won the Oscar, the first female black um, Oscar winner. Yeah, for Gone with the Wind. Okay, so going back to yeah, the Painted Desert, starring Clark Gable. In this in this classic western featuring Clark Gable, two cowboys, Cash and Jeff, find a baby boy in a deserted camp. They proceed into a bitter feud over which of the two is going to raise the boy. Many years later, Bill, the boy, has grown up in the home of Cash, but he extends a peaceful gest gesture to Jeff, who has continued to harbor resentment over the baby. However, during a mining venture, the feud escalates and Bill is forced to take sides. Interesting. Now, the next movie on this double feature is called 
Hitting the Trail. Hitting the Trail. Starring Tex Ritter. And this exciting Western from director Robert Tanzi, an outlaw, the Tombstone Kid, is framed for horse theft. He trades the horses with horse trader Hank and Tex Ritter, and Tex is then arrested for the crime. The true mastermind behind the crime, James Clark, decides to use Tex to get his stolen horses across the border by rigging a roulette wheel and letting Tex win the horses, then taking care of Tex once the horses have been taken out of the country. Action and suspense blend perfectly in this original, exciting Western. That's old. Uh, yep, what year? Uh, it doesn't say what year, but it's old. <laughs> yep. All right, we got two, four more movies. Next movie, RoboCop 3. There's three RoboCops. Actually, there's four, because there's a RoboCop that came out, I think, last year. That wasn't very good. But the original RoboCop stars Peter Weller as RoboCop. And what it is, he's a cop that gets killed in the line of duty. But it's in the future, so basically they take his dead body, reanimate it, and stick it in a robot. Mm -hmm. So his head and his brain are still still there, but the rest of him is a robot. Hence, RoboCop. <laughs> yep. So Omni Consumer Products, OCP, the conglomerate that designed RoboCop now owns Detroit. The company plans to demolish one of the city's largest neighborhoods to build a gleaming city of the future after an army of ruthless mercenaries finishes throwing everyone out of their homes. But RoboCop, sworn to protect the public, joins forces with a band of urban freedom fighters battling to save the, their neighborhood. After battling a lethal, efficient ninja android and equipped with a new arsenal of high-tech weaponry, RoboCop and the courageous residents take on OCP's private army. It's all-out war, an explosive street fight that could destroy either the entire city or the evil powers behind the brutal corporate raid. Hmm. Interesting. All right, so our next movie stars Patrick Swayze and Jennifer Grey. And some of you at home already know what movie this is, and it's not Ghost. It is Dirty Dancing. <laughs> Dirty Dancing, it's from the 80s. Good old Patrick Swayze, who unfortunately is not with us anymore. Yes, he did. He died a couple years ago. Patrick Swayze and Jennifer Grey star in this beloved coming-of-age story set against the backdrop of the Catskill Mountains Resort during the summer of 1963. Drawn to the staff quarters by the sound of stirring music, vacationing 17-year-old Baby meets rebellious Johnny, the hotel dance instructor, who is as experienced as Baby is naive. Baby becomes Johnny's pupil in dance and in love in this heartwarming, spirit-lifting movie that continues to captivate generations of movie fans around the world. Mm -hmm. All right. So we got our last two movies. And the last one is gonna be my most, one of my most favorite movies of all time, but we'll save that for last. <laughs> the next movie though is going to be called Oliver. I've never heard of it. It's called Oliver. Never heard of it. I don't know. No, no, no. That's Olive. That's Olive in Popeye. This one's called Olive Bird. Yes. Let's see what it's about. Charles Dickens' classic tale of a waft in 19th century England comes alive brilliantly in this Oscar-winning musical. Fleeing a life of workhouse servitude, Oliver arrives in London to seek his fortune. His journey leads to his journey leads the ragged orphan to a crime school for boys, where the roguish where the roguish Fagin teaches him to steal, and you've got to pick a pocket or two. During his adventures, Oliver meets a gallery of unforgettable Dickens lowlifes, including the artful Dodger. 
Oh, that's where that term comes from, the artful dodger. No. The villainous Bill, Bill Sykes and the compassionate tavern singer Nancy. As long as he needs me, as long as he needs me, consider yourself and where is the love are among the showstoppers and the superb Lionel score, Lionel Bart score for this exuberant movie musical. So it's a Charles Dickens, it's interpretation of a Charles Dickens novel. Interesting. Huh. All right, ladies and gentlemen, and those in between, we have our last movie, which is one of my favorite movies ever, The Sandlot. The Sandlot. Like Sandlot baseball. Guys used to play back in the day. You just can you literally just get a group of friends. You got a bat and a ball, and you go out to a field and you play baseball all day. Now, when I was a kid, we didn't have a sandlot, but we played what you would call wall ball. Okay, so it would during the, especially during the summertime, like now, me and my friend, we would play every single day, starting about eight o'clock in the morning. We'd go out in front of our house, and there there was a wall there, and on the wall we draw a box. Again, we're playing baseball, so we draw a box, and we play with a tennis ball, and we play World Series, which means. He was always the Dodgers, and I was the San Francisco Giants. And we would sit there, and we'd play, so we'd play nine innings. He'd be the batter, I'd be the pitcher, and we'd go through the motions and play seven games, or how many, the best of seven. We'd do that all day long, all summer long. That's how I honed my baseball skills in. So this is called getting called the Sandlot. And this movie was made in, what year was this? 1993. So I was seven years old. I was born in 86, so I was seven years old when this came out. I love this movie. All right. So here we go. In the early 1960s, oh, sorry. I can, that's why I didn't make any sense. That I was reading it wrong. <laughs> it's the early 1960s, and fifth grader Scotty Smalls has just moved into town with his folks. Kids call him a dork. He can't even throw a baseball. But that changes when the leader of the neighborhood gang recruits him to play on a nearby sandlot field. It's the beginning of a magical summer of baseball, wild adventures, first kisses, and fearsome confrontations with the dreaded beast and its owner, James Earl Jones, who live, who live behind the left field fence. Soon, nine boys have become best friends. Scotty is part of a team, and their leader has become a local legend in this hilarious and warm-hearted comedy. How awesome is that? So again, we are finished today. For this kid, my, my name is Diablo. Thanks for joining me for movies and DVDs with D, which is me. Thanks for being you. I'll see you next time. Thank you. It's lunchtime now. All right, so we're done for the day. That was about two hours of stuff, so I'm good to go. All right, peace.